Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this emergency meeting of the Board of County Commissioners for uh, April the 30th, 2020. The purpose of this uh, meeting is to see if we can clean up the language of our resolution that was passed this past Tuesday. But before we get started, I want to take a minute to apologize to the Board of County Commissioners for my inability to properly maintain my composure at all during the uh, last meeting. Uh, I want to offer a special apology to Miss Becky Amahoff for the way I treated her and talked to her on the phone, and there was probably others too. But I uh, sincerely apologize for the way I acted, and it was not professional and it wasn't in line with the way I was raised. So I hope y'all will accept my apology. And from that, unless there's any other comments, and we'll move into what we came here to do today. All right, seeing none, uh, I believe you can go ahead and post it on the uh, site. This is the ordinance revision that we're looking at. As you will see, it's listed as number four on this order. It says at 12.01 a.m. May 1st, 2020, the beaches within Walton County open for normal beach activities, which would not otherwise be prohibited by the Walton County Waterways and Beach Activities Ordinance within the, with the following restrictions. The Beach Activities Ordinance, ordinance has been in effect for over a decade or longer, probably two decades. And so anybody that's visited here before or used the beach can have a pretty good idea of what that is. So going through the uh, changes, uh, A, 4A is uh, no vending on the beach, no special events under B, no permits for beach fires or bonfires. We struck D completely and inserted the above language up there. And the new D says groups of more than 10 people are prohibited and a minimum of six foot social distancing shall apply. So that's uh, what had been brought forward. Uh, yes. Council, do we need to make any uh, comments or adjustments? Uh, no, sir. Um, and just to be clear for those that are watching on the county website rather than through Zoom, um, the the draft is available, I believe, on the county website if anybody would like to, to view it. Um, but I think you covered the, the revisions well. Okay. Now, as far as discussion is restricted basically to this, we can't add to or take away in some areas. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so this uh, meeting was noticed only to discuss um, the activities that would be allowed on the beach to clarify any confusion from the meeting on Tuesday. So that's what we're limited to. Okay. With that said, I'll open it up for discussion. Mr. Chairman. Uh, hang on. Uh, who? Me. You, you want, want to motion? go first? You want a motion first? Well, we can. Well, the, since uh, the motion Tuesday was mine and I guess I need to apologize for causing confusion um, in the motion, but uh, this is a lot cleaner, and I would like to make this a motion to approve this as written. Second. We got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion from the board? See none. Commissioner Nipper, I thought was coming online with Zoom, but uh, she's not made it in yet, so she's not present either on. Do what now? Yeah, I see that. 
Okay. Well, that's a county number, it looks like. It, it could very well be her. Uh, how long would it take her to get logged up here and look? Okay, very well. All right. With that being said, uh, Jason, flip back to that other screen with all the numbers on it. Not, not on the right hand side shows the raised hands. Okay. All right. Uh, we've heard the motion and the second. I'll open it up for public comment. Is there any public comment? We've got uh, five or six people at the public up here in the boardroom. Is there any public co comment from those in the boardroom? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and go online with those that uh, indicated they wish to speak. Uh, the last four digits is 1041, 1041. Please identify yourself for the clerk, please. Is it star nine, Jason? Yeah. Phone number one zero four one. One zero four one. Last four digits. Did it go away? They hung up. Okay. Uh, next up is Drew Burton. Drew Burton. Are you there, Drew? Yes, sir. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. If you spell your last name for the clerk. B-U-R-T-O-N. Okay, Drew, go ahead, sir. Yes, what I'm wanting clarity on is it was my understanding from the governor yesterday that the rental ban for vacation rentals has not yet been lifted, yet the beaches are open and hotels are open. So can you just give me clarity if I'm understanding that correctly, that vacation rentals are still prohibited at this time? Short-term vacation rentals are still prohibited, um, and that's defined in the Florida statutes. Hotels and motels was not applicable to them. It's just as the definition of short-term rentals by statute, and that's uh, quite a few of them in our county. But yesterday he did prohibit them until further notice. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, next up is uh, Karen Kruger. Karen Kruger, are you there? Karen Kruger, are you there? Karen Kruger, are you there? Drop her down next to the uh, last one that's listed there. Okay, next uh, is Bueller Douglas. Bueller Douglas, are you there? Am I getting out? I hope so. Bueller Douglas. Mr. Douglas, are you there? I don't hear anything there. Mr. Chairman? Yo. This is this is Commissioner Nipper. I hear you loud and clear. Okay, very well. Thank you. Uh yeah. Bueller Douglas, are you there? I don't hear a reply. Karen Kruger, are you there? Karen Kruger, are you there? No comment. I'm just watching. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, was this Miss Kruger? Okay, never mind. Your hand went down. All right, Randy Sims. Randy Sims, are you there? I am. I uh, just wanted to say thank you for clearing everything up. Appreciate it. And I just want to encourage you to, um, in the near future, take a look at the vendors. I think they could be used to maintain the social distancing. And for goodness sake, they need to go back to work. I think we're now, if you look nationwide, I think we're now in a recovery phase. We need to get the economy back going. So anything that that uh, that this board can do to get that uh, unique ways to help the people that are going to be suffering, uh, we, we just don't realize what's coming ahead of us uh, by the way of bankruptcies and foreclosures. And we need, it's going to be a, a, a slow recovery and anything that can be done on the county level, uh, we need to try to do. And, and um, I just encourage you guys to look at unique and outside the box to try to help these people that are struggling so much. But I do uh, thank you for clearing up uh, everything.
thing into something that is practical and everyone can understand. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sims. Okay. Uh, next, I have it as Davis J2. Davis J2, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Would you identify yourself for the clerk and spell your last name? Karen Davis, D-A-B-I-S. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, my question is, based on the ordinance that you put up on the screen earlier, you have scratched through the jogging, walking, etc. But then it says groups of 10. You can't allow any more than groups of 10. So I'm sorry if I'm still a little confused, but are you saying there now will not be the beaches are closed, or you can go on it just for exercise, as the governor recommended, but no chairs, umbrellas, etc. Okay. Well, Ms. Davis, um, the beaches, as right now, will open tomorrow morning. Uh, if you're familiar with the county's beach activities ordinance, ordinance, it basically says what is allowed down down there that is not prohibited by ordinance. And most of it, okay, so... You, you can jog, run, swim, sunbathe, whatever you want to do down there that's considered, a, has always been considered a normal beach activity. So uh, does that answer your question? Okay, so I guess I saw when you had scratched through that on that ordinance, that's that that was eliminating that provision. At least what I saw you put up on the screen when you started, it looked as if it had been scratched. Okay, what, um, it, the, what it was, Miss Davis, is that we scratch that when you scratch through it, you're taking it out, and then we right. and we refer to what the activities that are authorized down there by citing the waterway and beach activities ordinance that we have in place and have okay. had. So okay. that's that's the only reason so is ta taking them out and just substituting our present ordinance. Okay, so people will be allowed to go to the beach. They will be allowed to take their chairs and umbrellas, just no more than no more uh, larger than a group of ten. Yes. What size did you say? No larger than a group of ten. That that's correct. Yes, ma'am. And social okay. distancing. Yes. Okay, that does it. Thank you very much for the clarification, Miss Davis. Okay, uh, next one up is Jeff. That's all I have is Jeff. Or Jeff, are you there? Jeff, Can you hear me now? I got you now, Jeff. Just, uh, need to, your last name and spell it for the clerk. Okay, Sam Luck, S A M L U K. Um, the other day you talked about emergency orders still in place that would be reviewed every seven days. Is that still in effect? You'll, you'll review again in seven days? Uh, sir, so this is Sydney Noyes, the county attorney. Um, our action on Tuesday was to adopt this. Um, we're gonna clean up the language here today with our action today. Under Florida law, emergency declarations are only valid for a seven day period. However, the board on Tuesday authorized um, Commissioner Chapman to execute an extension um, on May 5th, whenever it would come due, to carry it through through May 12th, which would be our next board meeting. So the plan as of right now is that this will remain in effect until May 12th, barring some change in circumstances, which would require us to hold another emergency meeting. Okay, Jeff, did that answer your question? Yes, yes um, thank you for that clarification. And um, I also want to say I appreciate your previous comment when you opened the meeting, so thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up is uh, Bridgers. Um, don't want to butcher the first name, but Capison Bridgers, are you there? Mrs. Bitten Bridgers is fine. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? I, I got you now. Would you spell your last name Can for me? Can you hear the... me? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Spell your last Can name for the you clerk. Hear you. It's Ian Boy. You. Diaz and Boy, R I Diaz and Dog. Okay, Miss Bridges, you kind of breaking up a little bit, so, but go ahead with your questions. Okay, um, I am a property owner. I own um, several vacation 
uh, properties, and I'm figure I'm trying to figure out how to you know navigate this and answer questions of guests um, that have bookings in May and bookings you know out further than that. Um, I just wanted to know what is the likelihood of things changing. Um, what do you foresee, and what in what circumstances would make, would would make things change where beaches might close or have restrictions again? If if you want, I can try to address her. Uh, yeah, um, Ms. Bridges, this yeah. this thing here is is uh, kind of fluid. Um, we are I, under, I understand that. I just need some kind of guidance. Well, I mean, I, uh, I I have lost tens of thousands of dollars at this point. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to work with people um, and move their vacations. Um, but at the same time, I do have bookings in May, and I'm, I am inundated with questions from guests, um, in particular with the May bookings. But I know you can't give me a definitive answer, but I just was hoping that you might be able to give me some guidance of what you know your expectation might be. What... What what challenges what changes would you expect to see that would make a decision to to close beaches again? Well, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I mean, if social guidelines are, are not being you know adhered to, or if the cases go up, I mean, what do you what what, what data are you collecting, and what are you what are you looking at? Well, we're looking at whatever that comes from the CDC and also the health department, looking at the cases, um, hospitalizations, uh, deaths, all that factors in. But a lot of what you do uh, as far as a rental business is beyond our hands. You know, it, the governor takes control of that. We thought all last week that it was probably going to be lifted tomorrow. But uh, we learned, just like you and the rest, uh, yesterday afternoon that he did keep the, the ban in, in the place. I don't know if he's looking at it. Is it going to stay f till phase one goes away and then we go into phase two? Or if he's going to look at it like we try to look at it on a weekly or no later than every two weeks to see where we are health-wise and whether we need to modify uh, what we put in place or... Um, in any way, whether to add more or take away, depending on the circumstances, uh, probably not what the answer right. is. I, I understand. I understand. You have no control of what the the governor does and the time frame. I, I certainly didn't expect the day before, uh, you know, potential bookings that I'd have to cancel them. So uh, I at least was hoping that I'd have some idea of any kind of restrictions that might be going on Mr. You know, going forward in Walton County for the beaches because that is one of the questions I'm getting over and over again is that even if rentals are open they, my guests don't want restrictions on the beaches they want to be able to go out any time of day and do whatever activity they would like on the beach um, Which, these are small parties I have small units right I understand uh, did you, uh, you you heard what we're trying to do on this uh, modification of this resolution. There is no restrictions other than what has already been prohibited on the beach anyway for the last two decades. So, if if but right now they can't come because you can't make a reservation technically. So, but well, these are reservations I've had I'm, for since I January. Been. I was booked up. The, in January with yeah. my properties. So I, I have had some people cancel, of course, and I've had some people hold out that are have reservations in the next week or two, and that's what I'm, I'm just trying to see how I can address their questions and concerns. I want to let the legal Ms. talk Pe to you. Go yeah. Ahead. So, Ms. Bridgers, and I, I understand your position. I, I think all the board does, too. And, you know, like Commissioner Chapman said, this is a fluid situation, and I'm sorry we can't give you a definitive answer about what may happen in the future that would change our impact our impact our decisions on the beach but I do want to highly encourage you to seek some independent legal advice about what you need to do in light of the governor's order um, the governor's order prohibits short-term rentals indefinitely um, whether those reservations were booked in advance or now so I, I encourage you to to seek some legal advice about how you need to proceed in light of that 
Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Ms. Bridges, this is Commissioner Tony Anderson. Uh, one thing we would like to encourage uh, people that are renting, and although you can't rent now, as soon as it opens up to rentals, is please encourage your guests to follow social distancing. If we get into a situation that nobody's social distancing on the beach, then we're going to have to look closely on whether we close the beach or not. We are... Uh, I, I absolutely understand that, and I have one bedrooms and two bedrooms. I have very small units, so there's there's no parties, there's no large groups that are at least coming. And we need all of y'all's help to to get that out to the public if if you can. So, okay, well, Ms. Bridgers, um, our, your time's up. I hope we got the best answer we could get to you. But, okay, well, I, I appreciate you uh, allowing me to speak today and yep, yep. Um, addressing. You know, some of my concerns. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next up is Jeannie, G E N I E. Are you there? Jeannie, are you there? Jeannie, can you hear me? All right, let's try the next one. Uh, Jesse Mullins, Jesse Mullins, are you there? Jess. Yes, I'm here. Okay, spell your last name for the clerk, please. Mullins, M-U-L-L-I-N-S. Okay, Mr. Mullins, go ahead. Hey, I'm uh, tuned in from Ohio, and we love it down there, and we have reservations to get in the car in the morning and drive there. Um, so my question, this is news to me. I just wanted to hop on, and I'm trying to find that the beaches are open, and I just found out that, short-term rentals are not allowed. Uh, I've heard nothing from the owner of the rental, the single family house, I'm bringing my family of five. My question would be, if we show up and we're on the beach vacationing, is someone going to come and ask us for proof of residence or where we live or what we're doing there? I uh, don't believe the sheriff's office and our code guys are going to be asking uh, what state or whatever you're from. What they may ask you if there's a cluster of folks together that may all be family, that question will be asked, uh, probably asked is all of you family and you came together and all that just to make sure right. that we That's don't bust that tin. Beach. That's as far as the beach is concerned. That's though. as far as the beach but, is concerned. I, Mr. Mullins, this is Sydney Noyes. I'm the county attorney, so I, I do want to make it explicitly clear. I can't give you or anybody else that calls in legal advice about what you should do, um, but I understand your position and the difficult position you're in trying to navigate this. But I, I do think you need to be aware there are a number of executive orders, including a short-term rental ban that's in effect, whether or not your rental unit falls under that ban is something you need to address with the um, the individual that rented it to you. But there are also additional executive orders from the governor's office that limit travel from out of state, that um, sets up border, uh, you know, um, what, it, what would you call it? Roadblock. uh, roadblocks at um, interstate travel locations, requires oh, individuals really? coming into okay. the state to quarantine if they're from an um, area that's been impacted. So if oh. I were you, I would try to look into those governor's executive orders and, and if you feel it's necessary, maybe speak to an attorney of your own choosing about how you should proceed. But there, there are a number of um, things that are in play that would limit what you can do here or your ability to come here. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I do appreciate that, and I do not take that as legal advice. But uh, I've I've done all the reading that I can, and I I'm finding that Ohio is not one of those areas that Florida is restricting travel from or coming by car. But again, I'm trying to educate myself um, because the the homeowner has told us this week that if things change, we will not be refunded, um, and <laughs> it wasn't inexpensive. And I don't want to get in a car with my wife and three children and get stopped somewhere at the border and told we've got to turn around and go home. Um, so do you have any resources where I should look to educate myself? I, I would, Mr. Mullins, I would certainly get in touch with the uh, owner of the property. And yeah. if it's, if it's through a rental agency, I would get in touch with them and, and, 
you know, we found out yesterday that short-term rentals were not going to be allowed. So, also, um, just for what it's worth, all of the governor's executive orders, if you just Google Florida governor executive order, it'll take you to a page that lists all of the emergency orders that have been issued by the governor, along with press releases that kind of um, describe them. Okay, that's great. That's helpful. Sir, right. you could also, uh, this is Commissioner Glidewell, you could also go to the... Visit southwalton.com and get that information, and you can contact yep. them. I've been there. That's where I've, that's been the most helpful is southwalton.com. I've got a lot of good information. You made our tourist development ha uh, director very happy. But you can also go to the uh, uh, State Department of Professional uh, Business and Professional Regulations, DPBR, and that's who actually regulates uh, the good, the short-term rentals, and they, they could help you as well. And our sheriff's office as well, they've been tasked with regulating a lot um, under the governor's executive orders. Um, so you you may want to contact the sheriff's office as well to get some guidance okay. about how to proceed. All and right. they have a very active um, social media page where they, they are very good about disseminating that information. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mullins. Thank you. Good luck. All uh, right. Next up, uh, Laura L Lee Sparks. Laura Lee Sparks, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Sp uh, spell your last name for the clerk, please. S P A R K S. Okay, go ahead, Miss Sparks. Um, my question really relates to that last caller that was calling in. I know that some of the beaches in Florida have been have been closed to um, or open to locals only, and I know despite the short term rental ban, um, we still had a lot of tourists coming in the area. And I just wanted to know if y'all had considered um, just opening the beaches to locals only to prevent the influx of uh, tourists that may come into the area into homes that aren't following the governor's executive order well uh legal if you pick up on the uh so, locals only that's a very difficult thing to do Go yes ma'am um and i understand your comment um you know right now the situation we're in the short-term rentals are banned there are still a number of executive orders from the governor's office that are in place that uh, limit interstate travel or put other restrictions on those that are traveling from out of state. Um, the sheriff's office is enforcing those orders and it, it takes a lot of resources to do that. And frankly, I don't, I don't know um, if we have the capacity to enforce that additional restriction. It's probably best right now that we focus on those restrictions that we have in place to try to, to try to implement those orders as best we can. But as Commissioner Chapman said earlier, this is a fluid situation. If um, facts and circumstances change uh, and the board feels it's necessary to address any of these issues by closing the beach, that's, that's something we'll address later. Yeah, I would just ask that if we do have to take into consideration closing the beach again, that we we at least consider closing it to tourists and leaving it open for for locals. Um, I think when we close the beach, we definitely, um, even despite the the orders that were in place, we were still seeing a lot of. Um, tourists in the area when the beach was open despite the orders that were in place and now that they're open I have a feeling that we're going to see the same thing just like the gentleman that just called in was getting ready to leave in the morning to head this way um, I'm sure that there are a lot of other people that are going to be getting in their car tomorrow to head this way because they're hearing that our beaches are open so I would just like to, you know, go on the record and ask that if we have to consider closing them again, that we consider closing them to tourists and not to everyone. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, next up is, uh, let's see, is it Critter? C-R-I-D-E-R? 
Are you there? Yes, hi, I'm here. It's Kreider. Craig. Uh, go hi. ahead. I'm sorry, you didn't get all of the name, but spell the last name again. Can you hear me okay? Hello? Hello? Tanya, are you there? Hello? I don't know where she went. Let's uh, go down to the next one. We'll Get back to her in a second. Uh, next up is Jeannie. Jeannie. Jeannie, are you there? Jeannie, are you there? We've tried her twice, I believe. Still haven't got her. Jeannie, are you present? Okay. I don't know where she's at. All right, Miss Critter, are you there? Hello? I don't see her hand up anymore. And there she is. Can you hear me now, Miss Creter? Yeah. Okay. All right. I think maybe we got you now. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Uh, when the governor lifts the ban on short term rentals, will the commission consider their own ban on short term rentals if Walton County's number of positive cases increases? As it stands now, our county has the highest percentage of non-residents. And now that the beaches are open, we're going to see a lot more visitors even before short-term rentals are opened. Don't let legal handle that for you. Go ahead, Sid. Uh, Ms. Kreider, so my name is Sydney Noyes. I'm the county attorney. Um, and this is a question we've had in the past as well. So currently, as things stand, um, we all local governments, um, unless they had an ordinance, that was in effect prior to either 2010 or 2011 are preempted from banning short-term rentals. Um, that is a law that was passed by the Florida legislature uh, several years ago. So right now we do not have that authority and absent some uh, order from the governor giving us that authority, um, we would not legally be able to ban short-term rentals because we've been preempted you. by the state. Was that all, ma'am? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Ashley Wood. Ashley Wood, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Spell your last name for the clerk, please. W O O D. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. So I'm not sure if I missed whether you clarified on this or not already. We have small children who are just at this point after months dying to get out to the beach we you know plan on taking them but one really enjoys swimming the other prefers to build sand castles sand castles are not listed and i just wanted to know how specific are we getting as far as enforcement of these approved activities it's hard to tell one child you can do what you want to do and the other child who wants to do something harmless like build a sand castle well that's not on the list of approved activities so i just wanted to clarify now how how strictly is the list being enforced? Ma'am, okay. so and I'm not sure if you are able to see uh, the draft of what we're considering here today, but um, in, if the motion is adopted by the board, we're deleting the list of allowed activities and putting in new language that basically said normal beach activities, which were not otherwise prohibited by our beach activities ordinance, will be allowed. You still have to follow social distancing, so no groups of greater than 10, and you have to space at least six sure. feet apart. But building sandcastles was allowed prior to this. It'll be allowed after this as well. So basically, if okay. it was allowed before, you can do it now as long as you are social distancing. That answers my question. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, Jeannie. Uh, it's about the third time we've come to you. Can you hear me? Jeannie. I don't know where she's at. All right, we'll go to the next one. Sam Pagaloni, if I pronounce that right. Sam, are you there? Sam, are you present? Let's try the next one down. We'll see if we can get back to him. All right, next up is Shelly. Shelly, can you hear me? 
I don't have a last name. Sh Shelly, are you there? Shelly, are you present? I don't see her either. Okay, next one, Debbie. Can you hear me, Debbie? I can. Debbie Woolley, W-O-O-L-E-Y. Okay, Miss Debbie, go ahead. I'm just curious. I know y'all have a good reason. I just don't understand it about the beach vendors, like the chair, the guys putting out the chairs and umbrellas. If I'm, if y'all already talked about that, sorry, but we haven't talked about it. As we're, we're specific to this right here. I anticipate uh, a discussion uh, about the beach vendors and all that at our May 12th meeting, as to allow a couple weeks here to see if we're going to be spiking or not or if things going to be going down or stay in status quo uh, instead of putting them out there and then all of a sudden having to pull them back is one thing so we just wanted to give it a little more time for us to analyze what's happening within the county concerning the virus okay got it thank you so much yes ma'am okay try Shelly are you there Shelly Shelly, are you present? Can you hear me? All right. Sam Pagaloni. Sam, are you there? Sam, are you there? All right. I'll go down to Michelle. Michelle, are you there? Michelle, are you there? I don't know. They raised their hand, but can't get them to answer. So. Hello. Hello. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Michelle Lanier. Yes. Uh, what was your name again? Michelle Lanier. Okay. Spell L A. Yes. Yeah, sorry. L A N I E R. Okay. Go ahead. Um, my question is: We have um, we live in a community uh, near Golf Place, and they have several places that do rent, and I guess anticipating the ban being lifted, they have allowed renters. Well, we have called the sheriff's office once on one of them, and they're now telling the sheriff's office that they're relatives. So now it's kind of the word has gotten out in our little community, so now that's what everybody is telling the sheriff's office, and they know we know they're not relatives. Um, Anything, any suggestions on that? Well, in this case, the sheriff is the enforcement arm of this. It'll be up to him and his staff as to how he wants to address it. Mr. Chair. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Michelle, this is uh, Commissioner Anderson. Uh, uh -huh. If somebody is renting a house, they're, ha they're having to pay bed tax. So that will tell us if if they're renting it, even if it is relatives, they still have to rent, they still have to pay bed tax. So if that's the case, uh, they should there should be a way that, that the Sheriff's Department or the Department of uh, Revenue or, and or the Clerk's Office. Clerk's Office will know. And believe me, we have very good people in the Clerk's Office traffic, tracking this. So okay. there will be a way for us to find out and so just so as a word of warning to people that are renting uh if you get caught it's not going to be good okay, okay. thank you miss ma'am ma thank, thank you thank you i appreciate it okay i see no more hands up so public comment section is over well uh, one slipped in here when i looked away okay uh victoria danish victoria danish are you present Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Spell your last name for the clerk, please. Danish, D-A-N-I-S-H. Okay. Just regarding, yes, just regarding um, what the last gal was saying, uh, when the sheriff's office mentioned um, that it won't be good, I had read that someone was reported to have um, rented a short-term rental, and um, when it was reported, the um, renters were then... Um, had their renting ability revoked for a year? It, what are the ramifications if somebody does it in spite of the executive order? 
Okay. I'm going to let counsel talk to you about that. So a violation of the governor's executive order is a second-degree misdemeanor, which is punishable by a fine of $500, $500 per incident or 60 days in jail and or 60 days in jail. Um, also, uh, failing to remit bed tax, which that's regardless of any governor's executive order, is also a misdemeanor. I'm sorry, I don't know if it's a first degree or second degree misdemeanor, but it could be punishable by a jail term and a fine as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, um, had a couple more slip in here. Well, one dropped just a minute ago. Um, Heather Webb. Heather Webb. Are you there, Heather? Hi, I'm here. My last name is Webb, W-E-B-B. -B. Okay, go ahead. Um, I, I, I have a question, but first I would like to make a statement. I work with a group of about 200 independent owners who rent their home, and these are some of the most responsible investors that I've ever worked with. We came up with our own list of rules to uh, give to our to our guests to make sure that they properly socially distance, that they bring their own toilet paper. But we're very mindful that the community has limited resources. So I feel like there's a huge backlash going against people who rent their homes and invest in the property. And, and, I, and I hate that this happened, something terrible happened to this gentleman from Ohio. And that's, I just, I just wanted to say that, you know, we are mostly trying to be extremely responsible. And, um, you know, I just wanted to say just a couple of good things because I, I just feel like it's taking a beating. But my question is, um, there seems to be a little bit of confusion as far as the, the existing, um, uh, the reservations, the existing reservations that we have on our VRBO or Airbnb. My assumption is that we should go ahead and cancel those reservations and issue the refund. I just wanted to, before I do that, I wanted to just make sure that I'm understanding that correctly. And thank you for your time. So, Ms. Webb, I cannot give you legal advice, and none of the commissioners can give you legal advice either about what you should do. I highly encourage you to, to seek legal advice, um, independent legal advice that you can trust about how you should act in light of these orders because there, you know, there are serious consequences for violating them. Unfortunately, we can't give you legal advice, but like we talked about, there are resources available to you. I encourage you to read all the executive orders from the governor's office. The sheriff's office as well might be able to provide some guidance, um, but we, we can't tell you what, what legal actions you should take. I think she's already hung up. Okay, y'all. I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Mail. You're, mail. That's all I have is mail. Are you there, mail? Mr. Chairman, if you see a phone number, I don't know if it just says Mel for Melanie, but I'm 2158 is my last four. <laughs> all I got is uh, mail. And I have no phone number. No. Okay. I, I have nothing to say yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mel, last call. Mel. Okay. Robin Bush. Robin Bush. Are you there? Hello? Yes. Spell your last name for the record, please. B-U-S-H. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Uh, two questions. Uh, what is the definition of a short-term rental? And uh, why are the hotels exempt? Well, the governor and the state legislature is the one that come up with the definitions, not the county. And, and the, they, the definition, so if you um, look to the governor's executive order, his most recent one, I think, was 20-111. It should reference a Florida statute where it would contain that definition. If not, you would look in Executive Order 20-87. But it's a term that's defined in the Florida statutes. And I'm sorry, I don't know it off the top of my head exactly. I didn't, didn't know if a month would be short-term rental or, or uh, two weeks or what the actual definition. I hope you wouldn't would have known. Uh, hang on, the council's looking at a computer. Yeah, So, and I'm, we've been saying short-term rental, but I think the appropriate term is actually vacation rental. Um, and then, let's see. 
But you would look in Chapter 509 of the Florida Statutes to find any of those definitions that would apply to your property. And they also define what is a hotel, motel, et cetera. Well, well, do you know what the reasoning was why hotels were not, oh, not no, affected? Sir. You'll have to ask the governor, Mr. Bush. We have no idea we're in the dark ourselves. I understand. All right, I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Uh, next up is Rebecca. Rebecca, you there? Rebecca, are you present? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Spell your last name for the clerk, please. Calloway, C-A-L-L-A-W-A-Y. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Uh, for the question, I know that the governor says no short-term rentals unless it's essential workers. Now, I just got a booking, and they said they are essential worker. Do I take them for their word, or will I be required to get some kind of documentation? So, and I know we're getting a lot of these questions, and I know we're getting a lot of these questions because everyone is confused and, and looking for advice, and I understand that. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, and I think we've stated this already, we don't have any control over the short-term rentals that's been preempted by the state. Um, you know, none of us can give you legal advice. I can't give you legal advice. These are all things that I encourage anybody, if they're renting these homes and have questions about their rights, that they should consult an attorney that they, that they choose and trust. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jim Bagby. Jim, are you there? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thanks. A uh, couple of things, I think, uh, for clarification. If you look at the Executive Order 20-87, that gives you the definition. It also outlines who's exempted, uh, the military, emergency, governmental health, and other things. Uh, I thought, and this is really, I guess, a question for Sydney, that DBPR was the enforcement agency. So if you have a problem, you contact DBVR because in that executive order, they are allowed to suspend the license of the short-term rental firm or short-term renter, not rentee, I guess, uh, for one year. And yes. so- Mr. Bagby, uh, you're, you're right. Uh, DBPR was tasked under the executive order with um, regulatory authority for a lot of these violations, but, and I wanna say I looked at it this morning, so I, I'm hoping I'm remembering it correctly, but the sheriff's office, uh, the a violation of these executive orders on short-term rentals were also classified as second-degree misdemeanors, which would be enforced by the sheriff's office. They, they are classified as second-degree misdemeanors. And I would just say to, uh, to Commissioner Anderson's point, we do have some great people in the clerk's office and at the county, but this is the, the short-term rental violator's dream because they're not gonna pay bed tax. They're gonna get to keep everything and not report it. And that's how we won't catch them by paying bed tax. And so, yeah, they, we've had the same thing with people saying, I'm a relative or whatever, and we've just closed down our building to everybody except owners just to solve this problem because uh, of the potential for violation. All right. Mr. Chairman, yes. real quick. Uh, Mr. Bagby, I agree with you. There's going to be cheaters and no matter what we do, but we're going to do our best to catch the people that, that are violating and, and uh, they should be, their license should be suspended for violating the governor's orders. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jim. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Cindy Jansen. Cindy Jansen. And Cindy Jansen. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Spell your last name for the clerk, please. Yes, it's J A N S as in Sam E N. Okay, Miss Jansen, go ahead. Okay, so we are uh, what you would call renters. So. Um, we have a place booked in the Rosemary Beach area um, starting the 24th of May. So we have been following closely. We have been living in a state that has been in a shelter in place for five weeks now. 
So we have been sheltering in place and going crazy. So, but, you know, we have been contacting our rental company and they have not been very nice to us. And so it is frustrating from a renter standpoint. You know, we've been coming down here and supporting this area for probably 12 or 13 years now. And, you know, they're refusing to work with us, not give us our deposit back. And it's frustrating because money is tight for people right now. So it's frustrating to me to hear. I, I'm willing to totally respect, you know, the governor's, you know, ban on short-term rentals, but the rental agencies should not be trying to stick us with this either. I mean, you know, this is like, an, you know, an act out of everyone's control, you know, something that has happened that, you know, nobody wants and no one, you know, wants to have to deal with. But unfortunately, that's the reality that we're in. So I guess from a renter's perspective, I mean, I don't know what recourse we have, Ma'am. you know, what, what do we do? Ma'am, sorry to interrupt. Uh, so this again, this is Sydney Noise. Um, so I would encourage you, um, if you feel as though a renter is violating the governor's executive order uh, regarding the short-term rental ban, to contact DBPR, as Mr. Bagby stated earlier, uh, which is a Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation, um, or the Walton County Sheriff's Office to investigate. Okay. Okay, you know, we, we just, you know, we're trying to do the right thing, but we're also just frustrated, you know, because we've been following things daily, you know, like you said, this is a very fluid situation. It is forever, you know, constantly changing, you know, and we certainly don't want to break the law, you know, we, and we don't want to drive, you know, 10 hours somewhere and then find out, you know, we're doing something wrong, that we're turned away, you know, we're being shunned or whatever, you know. All we want to do is go stay at a house and honestly shelter in place there <laughs> with our family. So, you know, it's a frustrating situation, I think, for all parties, you know, involved. Um, but, you know, we just, you know, it's constantly, like I said, it's constantly changing. And we haven't been real thrilled with, I appreciated the lady earlier who said, you know, you know, we need to know if we're issuing refunds. I'm like, gosh, I wish we would have rented from them because, you know, we're, we're not in that situation. And I don't know if they've just been pushing back just to push back because they're getting inundated with calls. But, you know, as we get closer, you know, they want more money from us. And I certainly don't want to give them any more money if we don't know if we're allowed to come, you know. Okay. So. Um, Ms. Jansen, thank you very much. Time's up. Um, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Bueller Douglas. Bueller Douglas. Are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you now. I tried to get you a little bit ago. Uh, Spay yeah, your last name. Problem. So, well, I just had a comment. Uh, you know, I think it's very important. I'm glad some of these callers have called in. I think it's important to catch these violators of the rental ban because, you know, people that own these houses that only pay the mortgage and property taxes that support the local economy with the help of renters, you know, they should definitely be caught. Um, and I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that hotels and campgrounds and bed and breakfast they're all open. So that's fantastic. I guess the renters can just all flock to those uh, places instead. So the local beach owners they can be the ones that suffer. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, You're right. welcome. Yes, sir. Uh, Mel, are you there, Mel? We tried you earlier, Mel. Speak to me. I don't see him. I don't know where he's at. Mel, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, last one I have here is Haddad, and I will butcher the first name, but it starts with a Y. I think it's Yosef. Huh? Hello, can you hear me? I got you now. What's your name, sir? Yosef yeah. Haddad. Okay, got you. Spell your last name for the clerk. Uh, yes, Hotel Alpha Delta Delta Alpha Delta. All right, go ahead, sir. Yes, I just wanted to know what the commissioners are doing, um, talking with maybe other county commissioners nearby in terms of being in touch with the governor. On, um, If I remember correctly, I thought areas were going to be treated differently. He wasn't going to treat the north the same as the south. Um, our area, as I know you guys know, is very heavily dependent on tourist money. And now we, I'm, I'm happy the beaches are open, but uh, the whole point was shut down to stop the spread. 
or it hurt the economy to stop the spread, but now we're still hurting the economy and having the spread. And again, I support the beaches opening up. We have to start somewhere. But are you guys talking with the governor, explaining our situation? I'm sure you guys, um, I mean, even your own tax revenue is being tanked right now, even when you just raised the uh, bed tax to 5%. I'm even just wondering if you guys are going to raise that to 6% or 7% now to make budgets that you've got. So I just want to know, if, are you guys in contact with the governor stating our needs as a community for our economy to start back up? We are using our state lobbyists in Tallahassee, that firm over there. Uh, we are, I talk to her a couple times uh, every other day. Other commissioners talk to her more than that. And she reaches out to contact us as to what she's seeing or hearing in Tallahassee and also taking back to her contacts within the governor's office what our request is to try and help save some of these businesses and take other action. But, yes, we do reach out over there. I have not personally talked to the governor. I'm not sure he'll take a call or not anyway. It feels like they're really looking after the big business because, again, with hotels being allowed to operate, I don't know why they didn't shut down central travel or non essential travel for hotels at least. So it feels like they're listening to the economic needs, but not the economic needs of the small folks. So I feel like we're really being ignored while big money is just being able to get back to it. So when things open up right now and the hotels open up, and I may be mistaken, but I thought even Disney World might be able to open up. We're still going to have all the risk of the spread, yet none of any economic boom. Okay. So, Points. Uh, just want to say that. Thank you for your time. Yes, Thank sir. You. All right, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, go ahead and call the question. Okay. Uh, by policy, you need to take a vote on this. Uh, all in favor of calling the question, signify by saying aye. 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 Ms. Snipper, can aye. you? Aye. Okay. All right. With that being said, public comment's over with. At this time, the motion is on the floor along with a second. And it's to adopt the changes presented to the board here as, as presented. Okay. That's what's in uh, front of us. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. You get all that, okay. clerk. Kimmy, all right. Well, nothing else. I think we. You want, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Huh? You want to just let Holly say a, give a little quick update first. What the numbers are or whatever. Holly, about, are you there? About thirty seconds. Give me a. Holly, can hear you me? Hear, can hear you now? About a thirty second digest of what's going on. Okay. Um, as of this time today. We have 38, or as of today, we've had three new positives in the last couple of days that have led us to 38 positives so far since we've started testing for COVID-19. And the ages are still the same, 20 to 90-year-olds, still in the same municipalities that we've talked about in the last few days. Uh, Miramar Beach, Santa Rosa Beach, Freeport, Dequiniac Springs, Laurel Hill, slash Paxton, um, with that zip code. Um, but we are at 38 today, uh, so we've gained three new positives. Okay, can you speak to whether any of the National Guard is doing any cleanup uh, in the county or in the city? Cleanup? Are you talking about testing? Well, testing, uh, I think what they've done in the past, if there's nursing homes or whatever, there's, there's, it's positive the Guard comes in and does a uh, test of everybody in there. Uh, the, the National Guard is not doing that anymore. There's a, another different group that comes in and does some testing. Right now, um, I can't really speak to that um, in our county, but we do have a different group that is helping us with that if we are in need of that. Okay. Thank you, Holly. All right. We've got a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. We're adjourned. Thank you all very much.